Praise the Lord and welcome to yet another edition of our series of daily broadcasts which we have tagged the State of the Union. The union that is between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to me. Now, we have been looking at the business of fruit bearing in Christ. That is, showing forth evidence. Fruit that we are indeed of Christ. And one of the features of such expressions of Christ, we started to look at, we saw already friendship with God. Now the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Now that's where the business of friendship should necessarily start from. A business of walking together. The agreement part has to be something of a fellowship or if you like a covenant. Hence it says, except they be agreed. They have to be in some kind of agreement. There has to be some kind of similarity. There has to be a point of meeting, a point of concourse, a relationship, of course, of equality, for there to be something like friendship. Now, Jesus says concerning his disciples, that I call you friends, not servants, because all that I have ever heard of my father, I have told you. All that I have ever heard of my father, I have told you. In other words, the business of friendship operates on a dimension of openness, revelation, no secrets. No holds barred. Openness. Otherwise, how are they going to work together if they are not on the same page? Okay? Remember, we are still on the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Why? If he is going to walk the earth through us, in us, with us, then we've got to be on the same page. So Jesus, in bringing his disciples to the same page as himself, he says to them, I have told you all that my father told me. And by the way, I operate according to what my father has first shown me. Now we saw that yesterday. Today, let us look at another dimension of perhaps the same matter which is being on the same platform as Christ where he reveals his position to us so that we can relate so we must take our cue from the scripture as is our custom so today we will look at what scripture has to say in Matthew chapter 14. It is the story of Peter walking on water. Now, of course, we generally know the story. Jesus had just fed the multitudes And then the Bible tells us specifically, and I read from verse 20. It says, Matthew 14, 20 to 29. It says, they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. 
and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. Now that qualifies to be called a multitude. 5,000 men beside men, women and children. And straight away Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side. And why uh, want to go onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And when Peter answered him, and then Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said unto him, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. The word of the Lord says, tell my people to return to me. Jesus is walking on water towards the boat. And Peter says to the master, if it is you indeed, bid me come to you. So evidently, first of all, Peter recognized that it had to be by the word of the Lord. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. If my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be granted you. Peter recognized that it had to be at the word of the Lord. Not how you think it or how you see it or how you feel it. Not how the pressure is pressurizing you or how the anxiety is tossing you topsy-turvy. It has to be according to the word of the Lord. Otherwise, if they were on land, Peter would not have said, Lord, if it is you, bid me come. He would have just run to the master. Why does he now say, bid me come? He recognized that they were in a different circumstance. And it had to be at the word of the Lord. And Peter knew evidently that Jesus did all things by his word. So here's the first question among several. Why did Peter walk on water? What are the lessons for us in Peter walking on water? What was on display for which the Holy Spirit made sure that this story would be in the scriptures? Matthew 14, 20 to 29. It actually doesn't end at 29. It actually ends where the, about verse 31 where it says, And when they had returned into the boat, the storm ceased. Why did Peter walk on water? I like to adduce three different reasons. Jesus was demonstrating to them, one, that he had power over the water. He knew that his storm was raging and he walked on the water bearing the brunt of that storm. He walked on the water which was being ravaged by that storm. He walked on water in the midst of a storm. He was demonstrating that he had power over the water. Now you will see in the book of Revelations where it says that the waters that you saw, they are races, ethnic groups, peoples, nations, as if to tell us here that Jesus walking on water was a demonstration of his dominion. Second issue, Jesus was demonstrating to them that he had power over the storm. Well, by Matthew chapter 14, they should know this. Anyway, he had already quelled one or two storms before. And then number three, 
Jesus was demonstrating something which is even more critical to our present discourse. He was demonstrating to them that they could walk in the same authority and power as he did. So he says to Peter, come. Jesus didn't say to the, to the water, my friend, hold Peter up. He just says to Peter, come, walk on the water. Why did the water not misbehave? The water didn't receive any particular instruction from Jesus to behave itself. Why did the water behave? Loosely speaking, I would say that there was something in the water which recognized authority. And so for that moment it behaved. But Jesus was demonstrating three different things. One, his power over water, his power over the storm, and more importantly, I guess, the fact that they could walk in the same dimension of authority and power as he did. Why is that so important? We're talking about friendship. We're talking about fruit of following Jesus. What is the point of discipleship? What is the point of following somebody if you cannot be like the master and do what he does? That's the fruit bearing. That's the business of showing forth evidence that we are of him. We've got to do like he does and talk like he talks. What is the point of discipleship if we cannot be like the master? Did Jesus not already say in Matthew chapter 10, 24 and 25, it is enough that the disciples be as his master? If they troubled me, they will trouble you. If they hate me, they will hate you. In other words, being my disciples, you are on the same plane as myself. So whatever they do to me, they are going to do to you. And whatever responds to me, will respond to you. Now he's demonstrating it. He says to Peter, come. And Peter begins to walk on water. Yes, he began to sink the moment he took his eyes off Jesus. And perhaps that's why many of us are sinking. Many of us are experiencing the tribulation that is in the world, as we said yesterday. Because we are taking our eyes away from the Lord and put it on the world. So we are beginning to experience the tribulation which Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation. But in me, you shall have peace. Hmm. If we are not like him, then we have not been following him. You see all those equations and formulas in mathematics, Pythagoras theory, simultaneous equations, and whatnot. They were named after those men because it started with them. Now, if you are a follower of Pythagoras, then you will have to solve that equation according to how it is named after him. Otherwise, you are doing something else. If we are not like him, then we have not been following him. If we are not performing like him, then we have not been following. We are not his disciples. He said, this is how you will glorify the Father in your fruit bearing, and you shall be my disciples indeed. In other words, if you are really my disciples, you will perform at the same level as I am. Now, in several places in scripture, Jesus made it clear that his intention, his hope, and his desire is that we be where he is that we be like him, that we be where he is. Not just geographically, as we expect to be in heaven with him, but that we share the same father, we share the same ideology of the same kingdom, but also that we have the same capacities and abilities, the same message and the same spirit, and therefore the same power. Otherwise, we belong elsewhere. So whatever we see, whatever we can see in the scriptures concerning Jesus, it is demonstrable in his followers. 
and if we are his followers then people should be seeing Jesus in us otherwise the message becomes for you tell my people to return to me return so that you can measure up so I said there are several places in scripture where Jesus made it clear that his intention is that we be at the same level as he is. Now, before we even go any further, scripture says, first of all, that Jesus is now exalted to the right hand of God the Father on the throne. But then scripture particularly says that we are seated in him on the throne. So we are exactly where he is on the throne if we be in him and he in us now but more specifically in john 14 and 15 jesus gives perhaps our first example of him showing that he desires for us to function at the same plane as himself he said in verse 15 henceforth i call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. In other words, you now know what I know. I don't have any particular advantage over you as per knowledge or revelation. What I know, I've given to you. The question is why? Now Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are a face heard of my Father. He said, the works that you see me do, it's the Father in me that is doing the works. So if the Father loves the Son and shows him whatever he does, as John 5, 21 and 19 and 20 tells us, then it means that whatever the Son do, did was based on what the Father showed him. So now the Son, Jesus, is showing his disciples what the Father had shown him. Why? So that the disciples can operate like the Father. You see why Jesus said, abide in me and I in you? And if my words abide in you, you demand anything and it shall be granted. Jesus was giving us the key, not just to fruit bearing, but to discipleship. I want you on the same plane as myself. Now in John chapter 17, from verse 5 to 8, and I read, Jesus tells us or shows us a different understanding of the same principle of wanting us to be on the same level as himself so that we can produce the same results or at least similar results to his. And now, O Father, glorify thou, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest me them, or givest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. I have given unto them the words which thou givest me. Question is, why? I have given them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou hast sent me. Why is Jesus giving them the words that the Father gave him? So that as Jesus operates by the word of God, the disciples will similarly operate by the word of God. So that we can be one with him. Now, in John chapter 14, Jesus gives us a third dimension of the same issue, wanting us to be at the same place as himself. So he says in John 14, from verse 1 to 3, he says, Let your heart, Luke 22, 28 to 30, he says, You are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me you see that i appoint unto you a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me what's the reason that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel 
Jesus wants them elevated to the dimension of kings. So he appoints unto them a kingdom, just as his father had similarly appointed unto him. So we can understand that if he's the king of kings, we are the kings. He is the king of kings. But first of all, we are all kings. Operating with the same dimension of dominion and authority. He said, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me. My father gave me a kingdom, now I raise you to the same level of kingdom. You have a kingdom of your own. You know, one time, I remember this story now because it, it, it bears some, some relevance. I went out with a very well-placed friend of mine. Very well-appointed friend. You know what I mean by well-appointed? He has a deep pocket. Now we're going to have lunch. Now, as we approached the place, he brought out a wad of money and he handed it over to me. And he says to me, you do the spending today. What was he doing? Appointing unto me a kingdom as his father had appointed unto him. He wanted me to be the one spending today. So he gave me from what he had so that I could operate in that same dimension. Jesus says, Now I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. Now we are not done in this business of our similarity or if you like, equality with Jesus. That is his intention. Not just to be his followers, but to be one with him. And if we are one with him, then the expectation on him should necessarily be the expectation on us. Now we see yet another dimension of the same thinking. John chapter 20 from verse 20. It reads, And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his sides. This is after the resurrection. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Now that thought is repeated in John 17 verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. In the same way the Father sent him, he is sending us. Jesus indeed desires for us to function with the same capabilities as himself. We have just seen six different examples of scripture where Jesus made that clear. The the plan is for us to operate like himself. So, as scripture says, Jesus returned from the wilderness of his temptation in the power of the Spirit. So, all those things he did from Matthew chapter 4 all the way to the end, he did under the power of the Spirit. He returned in the power of the Spirit. We are even told that he went to the cross by the help of the eternal spirit. Okay. Now Jesus in going, he says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, And when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses. What's a witness? That which bears testimony to another. Like a fruit, like a sign like evidence. But we think witnesses just mean somebody who is talking about something. You are not just talking about something. You are. The very fact of you is proof of him. That was the intention. 
He said, wait until you be endued with power, just as I was endued with power before I started. So he gave us his word, which he had received from the Father. He gave us the same spirit, which empowered him, which he also similarly received from the Father. So that we would be him in the earth. Not just to represent him, not just to talk about him as we generally understand witness, but the very fact of us becomes a pointer to him. So he says, the people for whom I died, the people for whom I went to the cross, treat me as if I'm irrelevant. Go and tell my people to return to me. Our business is Christ. Our business is the manifestation of Christ in the earth. Now, if we get that right, we will not have the same desires, ambitions, appetites, perspectives as the people of the world. Because Jesus didn't. There's no point trying to justify going after prosperity or going after the things that we go after. There's no point trying to justify, trying to solve our human problems because we have issues. Look at Jesus of the scriptures. The intention is that we be reproductions of him. So he made sure that we have what he had. So we can function with what he functioned with. He said, I have given them the words that you gave me. And then he prayed the Father and sent the spirit that he too functioned with. So that we would bear fruit unto him so that we would accurately represent not represent like ambassadors which of course we are but to represent that is to make known again so that we be jesus walking all over the earth once again bearing witness to the original one the one in the scriptures the one who is now sitting on the throne in heaven so he says, tell my people to return to me. Now, in closing this business, you see, when you walk in the same dimension as Christ, that in itself is a revelation of friendship. Because we are operating at par. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And you can't walk with somebody except you know his, his, um, his heartbeat. You can match him stride for stride, step for step, at the same pace. Now, having seen these things, moving forward in perhaps the next couple of episodes of this series of broadcasts, having seen these things, a necessary further dimension of questioning should be, why did Jesus send the multitudes away? but later went to join his disciples. Look, think about it. He has just fed thousands. And straight away, he tells the disciples, get into a ship and go over to the... He constrained them, the Bible says. He constrained them. A simple word there will be force. He forced them to get on the boat and to go over to the other side. And then he took time to send the multitudes away. And having done that, he withdrew by himself onto the mountain to pray. Why did Jesus send the multitude away, but he sent his disciples to go to the other side? And then after his prayer, why did he not go to the multitude? Why did he go to his disciples? So what then is the difference between the disciple and the multitude? You know, Jesus didn't reveal the words of his father to the multitude. He revealed it to the disciples. Jesus didn't breathe on them to receive the Holy Ghost. He did it with his disciples. Jesus didn't send the multitude to go get the donkey that was tied somewhere. But he sent his disciples. Jesus didn't send the multitude to go into Samaria to buy food. But he sent his disciples. What is the difference between a disciple and the multitude? And the multitude? Why did Jesus go to the disciples? 
rather than the multitude. After all, today we say you, we want a big church. If you want a big church, you should be in the place where the people are gathered and not in a smaller meeting of disciples. Why did Jesus choose the twelve over and above the multitude? <clears throat> I thought he came for a worldwide ministry. Who then is the disciple or the multitude? Join us again same time tomorrow when hopefully we will examine these things and still in the grace of tell my people to return to me. Which one are you, a disciple or part of the multitude? It is the disciple that Jesus wants to bring to the same capacity as himself. It is the disciple that is entrusted with fruit to bearing. It is the disciple that is entrusted to reproduce the dimension of Jesus in the earth. But when we take off from there, when we meet again tomorrow, but bear in mind, it has always been the mind of Jesus that we walk as he did, that we walk as he does, that we do what he does because he did what he saw the Father do. And look at the results he produced. God bless you as we consider these things. Why did Peter walk on water? Because Jesus wanted to show that is his intention for us to operate in the same dimension as himself. God bless you.